Welcome to Blockbusting, the podcast where we love to hate the movies. I'm your host, Jay Light. Joining me once again, mm. my good friend, Grace Baldridge. Yes. Grace, we're, here. we're back. It's so glad to have you back. You're my second ever repeat guest. Whoa, that's such an honor. Right. But we did live together. We were roommates for a while. So I feel like if anyone could earn it. You're it you're top me. of the list. Yeah. I mean, you're uh, you and I have known each other a long time. We've mm. we've been friends for oh, God. Almost a decade now. No, that's so weird. It's yeah, so crazy. That's true. We uh, we we saw this movie. We Grace and I regularly hang out. Like yeah. we'll, we'll get together once a month. We'll grab uh, we'll, we'll grab some food and chat. Mm-hmm. And and Grace had the wonderful idea to go see a movie. Yeah. And I was like, let's go see Cats. And I I was hoping you'd say that because I was hitting up some people. I was just kind of gauging reactions of if someone would see Cats with me because it looked so cuckoo bananas crazy. Mm-hmm that I had to experience it. Right. That's like, how I, I felt. Yeah. And so, but people were like, no, it's, it's so crazy. Like, why would we pay to do that? Like, absolutely no way. And I'd be like, yeah, for sure. That was dumb. I was kidding. That was a test. Yeah. And so when you were like, let's hang out, let's catch up. I was like, oh, we should go see a movie. And then you were like, do you want to go see cats? You were hoping I was going to say cats what did beforehand. I, I think I texted you in all caps. All caps. caps. Yes. All, you were very excited. I was so excited. I was like, man, I knew that I knew that our friendship was real and true, and this sort of solidified it for me. Because all of the things that I'd heard about cats at that point were terrible. So bad. And so I thought, this will be a fun time. Like, I had been, I was just visiting <laughs> my uh, my parents in Texas, and I had other friends of mine from high school who were back home, and we went to go see Star Wars together. Fair. And then we yeah. were like, a lot of us will still be in town. Let's go see a movie on Christmas. And me and my buddy Sean... We're both talking and we were like, let's go see cats. And the other guys who we were with are like, why would you want to see cats? Mm. No. And mm. we were like, oh. And so then I was like, well, I still want to see cats. Yeah. I actually saw a tweet that I really relate to that I think encompasses why I felt this affinity with needing to see cats mm-hmm. and like going it, it, on the big screen, which was that heterosexual culture is in needing to hate a movie because it's quote bad. Right. And like, I love bad movies. I just rewatched Burlesque with Christina Aguilera and Cher. Lizzie and I were just fully like snapping. We're, like, it's so bad. They thought it was like a star is born. Right. But it's amazing. It's so good. It's not good. There's, <laughs> well, it's like, it. um, it's like Showgirls, right? Showgirls yeah. is fun and it's campy. campy. Yeah. Right. And I was hoping for that with Cats. That's I was what like, I was hoping I love for. like a campy outing. It's based on the musical. I'd seen the VHS of the musical. Right. Um, well, Long time fan. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that I was a fan. <laughs> I mean, you had the, you've seen the VHS, but the I've, musical. You know, that's I, more than yeah. like I would say probably ninety five percent. I of the knew people the in music. My life. That's fair. Yeah, I knew the music. I'm familiar with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, I knew like the plot. Um, <laughs> the very loose plot. <laughs> yeah, I say plot with like a little asterisk by it. Right. Does it qualify as plot? Um, and I was just ready for like a campy sort of weird outing and to have fun with it and like see what it was. Right. And that's what I mean. I I figured no better movie to see. Yeah. You didn't expect that than cats with you. Yeah, I know. It, we were set up for success. We did everything we could. I remember we were sitting there and let's watch. I mean, we, we got to watch the trailer just for posterity's sake. Because <laughs> oh, no. I remember seeing this trailer uh-huh. the, the first time it came out and the takes <laughs> hot right out of the oven immediately. Everybody was like, this movie looks terrible. It's such a misfire. I don't understand why. It's so fascinating. Because this trailer, yeah, it's so... Well, I think what's interesting bad. and and they thought it was it too. Like you can tell from the trailer, they were like, get ready to believe. And I was like in nightmares. I believe that nightmares are. Oh no. Creepy humans running around as cats, but you can't see them yet. Now you see them. First time we see somebody poor Victoria, poor Victoria, such a talented dancer. It's no shade against the talent in this cast, it's no, this animate. Oh, of man. course not. It's the it's the VFX choices. It's the directorial choices. I haven't seen you before. 
Mm, oh, I mean, look at Judy Dench. Dame, sweet, sweet Dame Judy Dench. And you got you got old Jennifer Hudson. I know. So there's so much talent in this cast. Everybody's all the people who are the regular cats. They're all professional dancers. Yeah. The leads of ballerina. We've got all sorts of people in various dance disciplines. Mm-hmm. And amazing. Like singers in this cast. Yeah. Taylor Swift. We haven't gotten her Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. Oh, I forgot about I fully forgot that James Corden was in this movie. Yeah. James Corden and Idris Elba, great! Oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> it really is kind of a fever dream. And Ian McKellen. And Taylor Swift is barely yeah. in this movie. Yeah. Gosh, oh goodness. I mean, this song is amazing. Right, but Jennifer, I mean, if you, this song is great. If you give it to a good singer like Jennifer Hudson, right. it's gonna be a knockout punch. But it's a no brainer. Dis- but you're distracted. That's what was so frustrating is I was so distracted on Jennifer Hudson singing this iconic song, which I should be so focused and honed in on because of the bizarro cat thing happening on her face. Here's here's something that I would like to say Yeah, once we get past this part. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Poor Jennifer Le- Hudson. Less of that has begun. Okay, I get so nervous <laughs> watching this. It I feel so that's my anxiety is coming back. Do you bow? Like, as soon as it starts... The, when we were watching it in the theaters, Jay and I go in kind of like snickering, like, huh, this is going to be so bad. It's going to be so silly. Like, right. yay, friendship. And then as soon as the cat started appearing <laughs> and you realize, like, oh, no, it's I, like this for two hours. I was like, yeah, meow. Like, I just, I just got so nervous. It made me so anxious. Once we started, yeah, once the movie started, it starts with this song. Uh, I'm going to look up the names of these um, songs. I think it's you, it's just called Jellicle Cats. Jellicle cat done, yeah. Jellicle do, so, Jellicle, Jellicle, <laughs> Jellicle songs. Jellicles do, Jellicles for Jellicle Cats. And Jellicles do. Yeah. And it's just all about the Jellicle Cats and it's about what Jellicles do. And Which, it says Jellicle, 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 Jellicle over and over and over again until it's seared into your brain. It's true. I will say what's interesting about that song, though, is that even though they talk exclusively about what Jellicles can and can't do... I have no idea what a jellicle cat well, especially is. Especially because even later on in the musical, they're like, a jellicle cat is a black cat. A jellicle yeah, cat yeah. A likes jellicle to eat mice. A jellicle yeah, cat yeah, is yeah. a white cat. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I don't, is a cat, is a jellicle cat just a cat? I think it's like a cat. This is what I would surmise from the song. I think a jellicle cat is a cat of a particular type of character and distinction. And you prove your jellicleness in a variety of ways. So like the Gumby cat is also a jellicle cat. And right. Victoria doesn't know what kind of a cat she is yet. And then at the end of this musical, where I guess there's been some form of character development that's supposed to be established within her, Dame Judy Dench says, you are indeed a jellicle cat. And then, so it's like she earned the title of a jellicle cat that's what i think can we pull up the the actual lyrics oh, no. of uh let's go with the jellicle cat let's go with the uh, jellicle songs for jellicle cats oh gosh. that's probably the most easy one to just pull up and see if they can even try and explain what a the jellicle receipts. cat is yeah, yeah let's go let's read some receipts are you blind when you're born can, can you, you see, see in, in the, the dark, dark? Can you look at a king? Would you sit on his throne? Can- oh, wow. Oh, we um, got the actual cat's music coming in. Oh, no. This is-, is this the karaoke version? Are we supposed to be singing along? Oh, God, no. I won't know. I refuse. That. Cut that off. I can't. I can't listen to it. I can't. I'm having flashbacks. Because jellicles are and jellicles do. Jellicles do and jellicles would. Jellicles so, would and jellicles can. But it sounds like this is just cats. All cats do this. I own a cat. The only thing that's different is the cats, do you know how to go to the heavy side layer? Which is like, is that, I don't know what that is. Is that heaven or is that hell? Because they make a reference to a cat being in hell or in heaven. It's really dark. It's very weird. It. The heavy side layer is basically. Uh, <laughs> can, you, <laughs> can you ride on a broomstick to places far distant? Are you familiar with candle, with book, and with bell? Yeah, have you been an alumnus of heaven or hell? Okay. 
So, oh no. <laughs> so now it's like we're getting in places where it's like, we can I dive don't understand. through the air like a flying trapeze. We can turn double somersaults, bounce on a tire. We can run up the wall. We can swing <laughs> through the trees. Okay, cats simply cannot do that. Cats can't we do anything. We can any of that. balance on bars. We can walk on a wire. That, you know. Jellicle songs for Jellicle cats. Can you sing at the same time in more than one key? What? Duets by Rossini and waltzes by This Strauss. doesn't make any sense. Cats do not okay. have this kind of so you know where- Tuvan throat singing level where they can <laughs> sing multiple songs in one key. You know where um, like cats, like the idea for cats came from with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Like it's based it's on- It's based on, yeah, T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot's book, book of, of poetry. Po- poetry. Yeah. And so- like which for some reason knowing that and I've read because I you go down such a like rabbit hole before you see cats you're a changed person after you see cats like I wanted to consume every I wanted to understand like how this existed why does it make sense to people yeah like, true believers all this stuff so I read some of the poems not even like knowing that we were doing this podcast like just reading what about poems it poems did I, you read the T.S. Eliot about like the, where Andrew Lloyd Webber got his stuff from so there okay. is a Gumby cat poem like can we pull up some of these po- i think there's a uh there's it's like, called old old deuteronomy's old book Deut- of practical yes. cats <laughs> yes. is it the name yeah, of the play yeah, that, the I, music the, the poem book? i think that's it and so there so there are a lot of the references in the musical are Sorry, based old in possum's poetry. book of, match, of practical cats but old deuteronomy i think is in the book as well yeah like all these characters for the most part do appear in the poetry for some reason in Poetry, I'm, I, it's way easier for me to suspend my disbelief and be like, oh yeah, what, yeah, Jellical Cats, dope, sick, awesome. Mm-hmm. But when you go into a musical with the expectation of, it's an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical of right. some form of a plot of a beginning, middle, and end, it just becomes so confusing because you're trying to bring this structure into a thing that has no structure. Whereas poetry, it's it's so free that right. you you don't have that same sort of confusion. But I totally like experienced like I tried to read the poems to make sense of the musical and it's impossible yeah see I don't think that I mean if there's any musical creator director you know lyricist who's going to do a decent job of making something that kind of makes sense out of completely abstract concepts yeah it's gonna be Andrew Lloyd Webber because Andrew Lloyd Webber's whole musical uh, oeuvre mm-hmm. exists in just this land of like nothing really makes a whole lot of sense. We're singing the entire time, so you kind of get overwhelmed emotionally. Yes. Fan of the opera, you get kind of overwhelmed. Uh, in Cats, it's very overwhelming. Um, he has a musical called Starlight Express that's a musical about trains. Yes. Well, also, Joseph and the Technicolor and Dream Joseph Coat. And, yes, Joseph and the Technicolor Dream Coat. Yeah. I saw that one. I saw that. I saw that production. on. Yeah, I saw that production live. Me too. And he's, there's a lot of, you know, he does a lot of stuff about, uh, uh, it's all like, you know, themes echoing back and songs that come back. Yeah. And so, of course, yeah, if you're going to have Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, a collection of whimsical light poems about feline psychology and sociology, then, of course, Andrew yeah. Lloyd Webber is probably the only person who can make this total nonsense into yeah. like watchable entertainable nonsense oh my gosh characters like the rum tum tugger jenny annie dots growl tiger mungo jerry and rumple teaser old deuteronomy uh mr mistopheles mccavity the mystery oh, gosh, cat yeah mccavity dot dot the mystery cat Did asparagus the theater cat buster for jones the cat about town skimble shanks this is all oh, i totally forgot about the railway cat yeah he's tap dancing on a rail car Oh my god. You know, gosh. classic. That's what Jellicle cats I and Jellicles do. I really hated that scene cuz I remember being like I don't care about this anymore. I want to leave. It comes towards the end. And then you know that like it, the railway cat they like make an announcement. It's like bah, 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 like the railway cat and then you know you're like god damn. Cuz you think you're so we close to being minutes. done with all the cats. You, you always think you're so close. And then when they like bring out another rogue cat in pants, yeah. you're just like please stop. Why he pants and no one else pants? I remember I was sitting next to you in the movie theater and the Jellicle Cat song happens and we're like, "You know what? This is fine." This Scary, is it's fine. this is entertaining and I'm like this is this makes no sense and it's like 5 minutes of song and then it continues and it gets to this point where it's right around the scene which uh which is the now infamous cockroach scene where uh where Rebel Wilson is dancing around and singing about being a gumby cat who lives in a house and and yeah. teaches mice to sing and teaches cockroaches to dance and I'd seen the scene on Twitter already and I think let's let's play it now because it's it's very bad. 
It's, it's I mean, scary. you can already even look in just the still. It's got clearly awful CGI and green screening. Everything is weird. The scale's all wrong uh, between the cockroaches and the cats. I yep. can't tell what's going on. And the, f- the cockroaches are the same size as the mice. Right, which doesn't make any sense. Nope. None of the scale in this movie is correct. But I'd seen this scene before, and let's go ahead and... and Yep, cockroaches with faces. Oh. Very uncomfortable. Yep, she eats one right now, and they're doing some weird Busby Berkeley numbers ah, too. No, no. Unzipping her body. No, she does it twice. <laughs> and now for the icing on the cake. Yep, very uncomfortable. Very yeah. unsettling. Well, she unzips her skin twice. She does it there, yes. and she does it towards the end as a device to escape from. Uh, where she is. Yeah, the uh, the boat. Yes, the barge. Led by Growl Tiger. Yes, yes, I yes. I think. It is. I mean, I think so. He has like kind of a very brief song that he is Growl Tiger and he mm. runs the barge right. to nowhere. <laughs> um, and yeah, but, but the unzipping is so unsettling. I remember I'd seen, yeah, I'd seen the sequence and I remember watching it and I was like, oh, this is fun. Yay. And then after it happens, I checked my watch and we were maybe 20 minutes into the movie. It's come so quickly. And then I was like, oh no. Yeah. Oh, we have an hour and a half left of this movie. Look at this. Uh, It's so weird. I I would venture to guess. I think that this is when... This when Rebel Wilson unzips herself, this Look at how moment excited she is. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, I I will give it to the actors in this movie. They all <laughs> sold it. They all like they all really really sold this, and I'm sure they must have felt absolutely ridiculous. I wonder years from now we'll find out when they knew this was the. This is going to be as bad as it was. Yeah, and and to be clear, like this is now like I I love cats. As I find it absolutely off, like it's a, it's gonna have a cult sort of following. I, I already know this because a friend of mine is arranging, like a screening, um, like a queer cat screening sometime right. in, like I, it will happen. But I want to know, like, when they knew things were awry. And for me, when this scene happened in the movie, when she unzipped herself, I was like, oh, this is uniquely awful. Right. Like this is a special kind of bad. I have not seen a movie that made me as actually upset after watching it as I was when we watched Cats. Because I remember we left Cats, and I don't think either of us said a word to each other for like two minutes. Oh, we did. Because we just had to absorb what we had gone through. It's so true. Because there's even, I mean, as the, the, the whole movie is steeped in ridiculousness. I can't, I can't even, get, like, I'm not even going to try and penetrate that. Yeah. There are other, so Please many stop. other problems, like yeah. pacing problems with the movie. Character choice problems. People playing character. People like everybody's committing at, at different levels to their characters. Like yeah. some of them are trying to make it a musical, and some of them are trying to to play up the campiness of it, and some yeah. of them are trying to play it straight and serious. Mm-hmm. Nobody's on the same page. Mm-hmm. That's part of the thing that is so infuriating. Is it feels like it's too many different ideas thrown into a blender yeah. and tried to be made coherent and cohesive. I think that's nowhere more evident than in the dynamic between the actor playing Mr. Mistopheles and uh, Ian McClellan yeah. playing um, Gus, Gus, the theater, the theater cat. cat. So that's a, that's a great example of like two actors that are just reading this movie totally differently. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that obviously they're both really talented. You, right. you don't get in this movie if you weren't talented because like they needed triple threats basically across yes, the board. So 100%. it's not that, it's not that like, wow, that someone's out of their depth here. It's just that Ian is clearly playing this like campy, very bumbly, silly mm-hmm. character, and Mr. Mistopheles, the actor playing Miss that that cat, um, is doing a more sort of like serious. Like there's more of an inner. He's dialogue, got inner turmoil. Inner turmoil that you can sense of like feeling like inadequate as a magician, as a magical cat, and it's just one of Laurie those things. Laurie Davidson. Where yeah, it's just one of those things where like the 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 juxtaposition between the two of them and the scenes where they act opposite at each other is so much like, oh, this is why this is a weird thing on right. top of many other reasons is because like you have one actor that is just being a campy kind of 
Mm-hmm. silly, bumbly, old theater cat. Like, right. here I am. And then you have another character that's like, what will become of me? Like, and it's like, it's just yeah. weird. Let's look see. at like, even from an, even another perspective, right? We've got Idris Elba playing McCaffrey. Oh no. <laughs> what have they, what do we oh, got? Oh, this why? is the cat in the hat. Mm, large yikes. See, I never saw the cat in the hat. I've never seen it. Let's play this scene. Cause I feel like this is something this where is it's also like. Alarming for me. I, what is this scene? He's doing some sort of a song and dance. I never saw this. Stop this right now! Uh-huh. Who said that? Me! Remember? There's a fish. But look, this CGI is better. The fish this is, makeup's yeah. better. Didn't the cat in the hat get nominated for an Oscar for best makeup and hairstyle? <laughs> what is a happening? See? What is this? But this is, look. Look at this. <laughs> oh. I mean, this is, this is another level of bad. Oh my gosh. Children? But cats is a different kind of bad than the cat in the hat. Do you think that the movie, so obviously with the cat in the hat and also with the Grinch and Mm -hmm. like the, like, and the Grinch is a beloved classic. The the Grinch, there's no one. We enjoy the Grinch. Um, Do you think that if they had done practical effects, like how they did in Broadway, that that would have been less bad? Yes. Cause at least look cat in the hat and the Grinch, both movies based on Dr. Seuss, okay? Yep. Dr. Seuss is essentially incomprehensible poems in the vein of Old Possum's Book You're, of Practical Cats. I see the through line here. Yep, but they look unsettling, but also it's like it's meant to be goofy and weird. And and frankly, I think that they're playing into mm-hmm. the campiness and ridiculousness of it in yeah. a way that Cats on a grand scale does not. No. Because – even though some of the characters in here, like Idris Elba and Judy Dench, are again playing totally different realms. Judy Dench is playing it like straight and and totally like down the barrel. I'm gonna yeah. be like this nor like I'm gonna be Judy Dench here. Yeah. And Idris Elba is playing like this scampy, whimsical cat who is so campy. Yeah. And say literally saying his own name as he like poops away. Yeah. Which is so I mean, it's more fun at mm-hmm. least, right? It's fun. It's campy. I can't believe it has a 32 on Metacritic. That's so, that's so high. That is that is. It's ridiculously high. high. The cat, Cats is one of the absolute worst movies I've ever seen. I can't yeah. imagine how it has even a decent rating. You know, I think that there is something to sort of the fun element that they that I think Tom Hooper missed. That's what I'm. This. Yes, that it was the the next point I wanted to bring yeah. up. I think from a grand scale, top down, Tom Hooper made a lot of directorial choices here where the whole movie I feel like is lensed and told in this way that feels like it's trying to be serious. Yeah. Like Les Miserables is a musical, the one he'd done, I think right before this, I might be, he might've done one in between, Mm -hmm. but Les Miserables, obviously it's very, based on the story of it, it's this sort of grand serious musical. Yeah. But Cats fun. is absolutely not a grand, serious musical. Yeah. It's whimsical and weird and I think – and very campy and plays within those realms and that's what people like about Cats mm-hmm. based on everybody who's told me that I'm an idiot for not liking this movie. They, I've had people – literally Listen, listen Grace. I've had people who I said that I didn't like Cats – in uh, in Facebook groups that I'm in, and they're like, "What's wrong with you? Cats is great. Cats is fun." And I was like, "This is clearly made in a way that's like, it's, it's not made in earnest. Mm-hmm. It's made out of just like a, tr- a desire to like poke and steal money from theater kids who are like, I'm gonna go see Cats. This is gonna be fun. Oh my god!" Or people who, and, and and to another point that we'll I'll table for a sec. People who are like, I'm gonna go get fucked up and go see this movie. And it's yes. gonna be a great time. Pretty large demographic and the people I hang out with that have said that. But this the thing is like, you can't make a movie where it's too many different things jumbled together at once. There's no clear direct vision with Cats mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah, I think if Tom Hooper had either picked a lane that felt in line with the ridiculousness of the show or asked his actors 
like a director should do and directed them to play something consistent and not and and pick a lane as far as like are you gonna play it straight and dark? Are you gonna play it serious and can't or uh, not serious? You're mm-hmm. gonna play it campy and, and strange. If everybody's on the same page doing that, then I think this movie doesn't turn out to be a, a total train wreck. It just becomes something that's like not everybody everybody's cup of tea. Yeah, something as sort of absurd as cats. The the elements of realism that that were attempted, I think, just really failed in a pretty major way, which mm-hmm. was just like the set design, um, the 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 direction when it came to like introducing the character of Grizabella, played by Jennifer Hudson, versus mm-hmm. the introduction of like a James Corden character, and like just tonally all over the map. And I do think that that I agree with you. There there should have been. Like make this really fun, like over the top, silly, and and the the that sort of the, that gritty sort of tone that I think Tom Hooper was maybe looking for in mm-hmm. again an absurd musical about cats is evident in the choice of the CGI. Like yeah. I think a practical effect, a different type of makeup, um, not the the fur realism that they were really advertising as something so impressive. Like that's right. not the that's not the lane. I don't need that. Go with go. With, let's make it. Let's get some Cat in the Hat. Makeup. Some yeah, something I'm comfortable sort of like with totally that. silly. And then I also think another thing is that this movie hinged so much on the publicity that came just from the cast. And I think that was really distracting. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that this movie, they would have felt a little bit more free to just be silly and insane in a way that I think is more true to the musical if they'd cast sort of very talented unknowns like Victoria, if it had been more of like the unknowns and maybe you keep like a Dame Judy Dench or something, but the, every scene, it was just sort of a cameo from a different famous person right. playing a role that was very, dist- cause then you know what these faces look like. And so you're hyper aware of mm-hmm. what Rebel Wilson, what James Corden, what Jason Derulo's faces are do these faces that you know so well right. from pop culture. Taylor that are Swift. To- yeah. I-, I was the least distracted with, I think Victoria, even mm-hmm. though, again, the makeup choice is bad, but I was the least distracted with her because it's not, my brain isn't trying to make this face work on this cat body right. in a way that I that I was trying to do with like Taylor Swift. And the choice of some cats to have boobs and some cats to <laughs> not is just so bizarre. Taylor Swift weird contractually bananas. allowed to have boobs, Rebel Wilson not. Victoria doesn't like, it's just, it's one of the, it's like, you don't want to notice it or say any, but it's like, there's a whole thing where like Taylor Swift is like shimmying. And I'm like, what is happening in the, with the cat body? Like I I decided in my brain that this was a cat body that I'm seeing. And now it's clearly Taylor Swift's body as covered by CGI fur. Like I am. I'm oh yeah. Just- and this, yeah. So they obviously, they've got a lot of stuff. Yeah. D- Jason Derulo's, uh, d- dick got shrunk in the movie. What? They CGI'd away his penis. Well, none of them had. But j- that's the thing. What? Jason Wait, Derulo what? originally what? did. You didn't hear about this? He originally had. I'm sorry. No, I mean, probably not. He was probably not hanging full brain, but he's got, he had uh, his, oh, Jason Derulo, goodness. he got a package, you know, and in that skin tight bodysuit. They uh they couldn't want to have that. Yeah, what's this? What's this direct quote here? Uh, oh my! Jason Derulo uh, lamented the his that his famous bulge was no longer present in the movie version of Cats. They CGI'd the dick out. Yeah, they did the CGI. I noticed that. Wait. 125%. I can see it for sure in the trailer. So his bulge was in the trailer. Okay. I remember that also coming up initially. What? Yeah. Uh, he's playing the Rum Tum Tugger. Oh my God! Uh, so, who sings about milk? <laughs> and there's a lot of there's a lot of milk and fun shit. This um, is wild. Yeah, last month Jason Derulo was enrolled in a penis print controversy after posting a risque photo of his obscured. K- kudos to whoever wrote this Rolling Stone article. This obscured long dong to Instagram before it was removed by the photo sharing platform. Oh my goodness! Fuck you, mean I have underwear on? I can't help my size. But you know who can help a size? Tom Hooper with that sweet, sweet CGI. That's the other thing. The CGI. You, did you hear about what happened to the CGI in this movie the weekend it was released? That some of it wasn't finished. It wasn't finished, so it they still re-released didn't it. Feel finished when we saw it. To be honest, it, it didn't. It, it wasn't didn't feel finished. You could see. I didn't. I didn't catch this, but Daisy Green did. She went and saw it. Oh wow! She saw it, and she has the same. She's in the same boat as us. Okay. She saw zippers on the cat suits. What? Yeah, she noticed zippers. Oh my god! Even after they re-released this new version two days later, I go, oh my god! One week after its release, 
Tom Hooper edited and recut the film after it was panned by critics. How can you recut this movie? It was originally intended to be a traditionally see. I, okay, I would see an animated musical of Cats. That'd be yeah. fine. Those are what it was originally intended and, to be before boy, Tom Hooper came on board. Really? Yeah. Okay, so it was meant to be. Oh, so he was the one that sort of went for. Okay, Tom let's, Hooper ruined this movie. Yeah, he really did. I, I remember Has he we commented about it. No, because I remember we talked about this in the car ride back. I have from views, the movie theater. Yeah, Tom Hooper ruined this movie. Tom Hooper got too much credit too early on in his career for directing like vague shit, like uh, like King's Speech. Uh, and Tom Hooper was was not equipped to direct this movie. Mm-mm. Not equipped at all. But so it is interesting that Universal Pictures originally planned to release Wicked mm-hmm. on this release. Who's date. directing the, because the Wicked? I adaptation. love Wicked and they better do that ju- that is uh, t- comparatively talking about cats talking about Wicked. Wicked has a plot. Uh-huh. Wicked's got a f- it's a plot, it's entertaining. It's yeah. Stephen Daldry, great director. Have they cast directed it? Billy Elliot. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's coming out in a couple of years, so okay. I would hope they have a cast by now. Let's wow. see. Do they have a cast? Because the thing is, I really love, I love musicals. I like- Oh, no cast yet. Interesting. And yeah, that'll, I'm really interested to see who they, because Kristen Chenoweth and Adina Menzel originated the roles on Broadway. Yeah. And I was, they were like my screensaver. I was They'll obsessed probably bring with this them musical. Back. I would imagine. They'll probably have them in some capacity. Yeah. yeah. So, and, okay, but before before we wrap it up, I would like to bring up a larger point here. That This is okay. something that really bothered me, not just about cats, and I think it's it, sort of about cats, but about other ways that people consume movies and the way that I consume movies. Yeah. A lot of the criticism that I got for not liking cats from the people who I posted and they liked cats, right? They're like, oh, you got it. If you saw, didn't see it on substances, you did it wrong. I think, I, and I, and I, I'm sober. I've been sober four and a half years. I think that if you can't enjoy even a bad movie mm-hmm. without being on some sort of a drug, then you need to re-examine that bad movie in particular. There are bad movies that I like watching, that I'm entertained by watching, even though I'm not on drugs when I'm watching those oh, yeah. movies. Troll Two. Troll Two. Mm-hmm. The Room. Oh yeah. Um, I I I can enjoy those movies on their own shitty merits. Yeah, the entire Hellraiser franchise for me. Yeah, Love I them. I still haven't seen any Hellraiser. We're extremely bad. I love them deeply. I mean, they're they're uh, amazing practical effects, an incredible world, um, and that's all. I mean, I'm a I'm a huge Hellraiser pinhead fan, but you know, they the later on in the franchise, they get they get pretty rough. But <laughs> I still enjoy them. But you can watch those movies and enjoy yeah. them, even though you think objectively they're bad. Yeah. Because there can't be. Right. In like, in really fun, good ways. I would imagine that if I went, I've never done this before. I would imagine that if I went to a Rocky Horror Picture Show midnight screening. Yeah. I would probably have a good time. hmm Even, because I know that movie's super campy. I know that there's this whole subculture around it. Yeah. And I don't think that. Even if I went there stone cold sober, I would probably enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. I think that that is like without question. I don't – if you're watching a movie and you're like the only reason to enjoy this movie is because you're on drugs, then you got to change your movie watching habits. Yeah, you have a different thing on your hands. Watch a movie be – watch – let a movie be bad for bad sake Mm -hmm. and not be like, oh, this changed things. Even a movie that's good. Mm -hmm. There are movies that I would watch – and watch them on drugs, and I was like, this is the greatest movie of all time. And then I watched them sober, and I'm like, oh, I was just really high. Yeah. This movie's fine. Uh-huh. That's how I felt about, um, frankly, that's how I felt about 2001. Mm. I really loved 2001. Mm-hmm. I had exclusively seen it uh, high yeah. for the first couple times I'd seen it. <laughs> it got re-released last, last year, mm-hmm. I think. Christopher Nolan did a reprint. Went and saw it, Cinerama Dome. Oh, Wow. Saw it, you know, Stone Cold Sober. And I was like, oh, okay, I see. I just, there's parts that I really like these visuals. I was like, this is really cool and interesting. Yeah. The, I, I, I brought this up when we had talked about uh, Enter the Void a couple episodes back. Mm-hmm. Enter the Void is a movie that's basically, it's like, it's a cool visualizer. Okay. It's a movie that somebody who's on drugs is going to really love. But it's not a great movie. I do think that 
2001, don't get me wrong. I still think 2001 is a really, really good movie. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I, I would even, it's dang to say there are sequences that are great. Right. But I had a different view of that movie because I was on drugs watching the movie before. Yeah. I don't feel like, exactly, yeah. See, this whole sequence is is in Enter the Void. It's a whole DMT trip, right? I remember, I think I was even on drugs the first time I tried watching Enter the Void and everybody who I was with, also on drugs, and we were like, oh, we can't even handle this. This is too much. <laughs> but this is too much. It's, literally, it's a DMT trip going on midway through the movie right now. Oh, my gosh. And we're just like, okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sad I'm good. But it's, it's cool visuals. You can't it's deny really, that. It's really cool. People would enjoy that. Uh, 2001 has some great visuals. Yeah, yeah. Same deal. Great. 2001 has a better story than Enter the Void does. Mm -hmm. I love the the villainy of, of Hal in 2001. Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff in here where it's like, I don't think, I think a movie should be able to stand on its own without anything in your system. Right. I would imagine maybe that Tom Hooper probably was dipping a little bit too much lost in whatever sauce his flavor is I, when he was making this movie. Yeah. Like, There's a lot of cocaine confidence in this movie or something. Well, the, the, okay. The thing about this movie is like, I don't know if, like, I don't know if Tom Hooper knew, I, just like even from the trailer and the way that the rollout was, I think they thought they crushed it. Like, I don't I think, think they, they did knew. Too that this was going to be its reception until it was far too late. Everybody's in this movie. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, this is great. This is totally fantastic. Yeah. So much confidence. So much hubris. Yeah. This movie's cinematic hubris. And that's what makes it so interesting, and I think that's why it will really kind of live on and potentially gather a cult following as I'm starting to kind of see a little bit. I think, it, I think you're probably right. I will gladly not sign up to be a member of that cult. But I don't think you're wrong. Yeah. I and if you join that cult, I listen. I'm I'm really interested and open to it. I really am. It's just one of those things where I like the more that it gets shunned, the more I just feel like cats is queer culture and I like want to embrace it. You know what I mean? But Even, there are other better movies that I think exemplify queer like culture, burlesque, right? Like burlesque, absolutely. Yeah. I know there are, but I also like, I'm not saying that this is going to be like my movie, like let's go get cats tattoos. I'm just saying that like, I want to show up for it. Cause I feel like it's like not being invited to the prom. I don't know. I can't, I can't explain it. I really can't. I just feel like it's feel like, it's like bad and misunderstood and like for like some legitimate reasons, but some reasons like people are just being mean and like, I want to be there for it. And that's like queer culture. So I'm like, I just want it to like raise it, like itself and know that like, you know what, like you're going to find your people one day and like, you're going to find your family cats I mean, and it's going to be only gay people. You know, at pride this year, somebody's going to do a crazy oh, cats yeah. float. Yeah. What? Well, what? Which is going to be horrifying in person to see. And they I'm were just like, stupid. why would you wear that much fur? It's June. They were stupid that they didn't release this before Halloween because like the gays, we would have rallied. Are you kidding me? Oh, you me? totally would have. We would have like turned, I would have made my own cat suit. You know what? Let's, I think that'll, that'll boil down to it mm -hmm. too. A lot of this, of, of course, there's a lot of really bad parts in this movie. I can't emphasize that enough. This yeah. is so bad. This is one of the absolute not worst good. movies I've it's ever not seen. Good. But... If they had marketed it a little bit differently, mm -hmm. and if they had marketed it to to play into the hands of an audience that I think would be much more willing yeah. to embrace it, yeah, as opposed to a family, go see it on Christmas with your family audience, yeah. as opposed to, hey, this is a weird, crazy movie that's going to come out around Halloween, yeah, and it's very tied. It'll be tied into queer culture. Yep, LGBT audiences will will rally. flock to this movie. They'll rally, rally around it. And it doesn't feel like it's just a cash grab mm -hmm. in, a, in the way that the, the current marketing of it is, where it's mm -hmm. like, this is the cinematic event. Yeah, and releasing you it will around believe. Oh, yeah, releasing it around award season is mm -hmm. like it's very very cringy. It's wrong. I always have a my my brother pointed this out to me when I was younger, and I always think about this. Do you remember Mona Lisa's Smile? That movie? yeah, he we watched a trailer for it um, like after it had come out, and I was still really young, and he just said he's like, oh that's too bad, and I was like, what's too bad about Mona Lisa's Smile? And he's like, they really thought it would get awards, like they really thought it would like people would love, like it would be like Goodwill hunting or something. Right. Like yeah. they really thought that it was Mona Lisa smile. And I was like, Oh, I guess you're right. And that was the first time I realized that like movies are just bets. Like they're just like studios making these bets. All it is. Yeah. And so whenever that happens, yeah. So whenever like I see a bet 
from a studio. I sh I don't feel bad for the executives. I don't feel bad for these people. But what, but there is like this hubris, this like really fascinating. Like wow, you really missed. Yeah. Like you really messed up that bet. When I see them releasing this around award season, being like Taylor Swift's song, Beautiful Ghosts. Let's That's all sing it on the count of three. And it's like it, they just missed. My favorite part about Cats in in the aftermath is when the shortlist for best original song came out for the Oscars and the cat song oh, beautiful ghost was not on the shortlist. And I was like, but you it, fucking deserved that guys. But it was, it did get nominated for a golden globe. It got nominated for a golden globe and Taylor Swift showed up to the golden globes well, I think ready her, to win. I think the, the guy she's dating is also nominated for something. Who's she dating? I don't know. Joe Alwyn. <laughs> I don't think I think you just made no, that. No, I think up. that's his name. I swear that's his name. He was in um he was in the movie um Taylor uh, Boy Erase. Swift. Joe Alwyn. I'm close, right? Joe Baldwin. Joe Baldwin. Who's Joe who's she dating? Public image. Joe There, see Joe, Joe Alwyn. Joe oh, Alwyn. Wow, 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 wow. There you go. Is he nominated for was something? He in what was it? Was he in something that was? I thought that's why he was at the Golden. I don't know. No, he's not. Oh, he was in the favorite. So he, so she was just there for the, a couple. For she the was cat here because she got nominated for, for the, cats for the cat song. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. and she I, thought they thought she was going to win. I can't wait for all the people to start commenting on it. Like in five years, for Taylor Swift to do an, just an honest interview about like cats. Like what happened? I mean, I, I said this before, and I, I I've said it on my Twitter, and I'll say it again. I cannot wait to see the Heart of Darkness documentary about cats. I can't. I hope somebody has it. I can't. wait. We need it. I can't wait. Uh, who? I hope that there's some some wise person on set ready to do it. I'm right. Like whether it's like five years from now, twenty years from now, I cannot wait. Yeah. Well, Grace, we got to wrap it up. I am so glad to have.